Good everybody, what we're going to have a look at tonight is uh, how to disassemble the one of the clutch assemblies that you'll find inside an automatic transmission. Uh, the transmission I'm working on here is a ZF5HP19. There are a number of different styles of clutch assembly. Uh, the one I'm going to show you here is the one that the majority of the clutches are like. Uh, for all of the clutches uh, themselves, they have a clutch pack that sits uh, at the front. They consist of a stop ring and then a number of friction and steel plates. Uh, so the first thing you're always going to do is just remove those. It's a very, very simple procedure. Just get some sort of pick tool. This one has actually got quite a thin snap ring. Some of them are quite thick and you need a fairly solid screwdriver. But all we're going to do is just leave that out and then you can just pull the whole thing out. You can just lift out the entire clutch pack. The clutch pack consists of a number of items. As you can see here, what we've got first always is the undulated spring. Now it's just a thin piece of spring steel. It's got a wavy appearance, so it looks actually like a spring. On the other side of that, we have the first of the steel plates, then friction material, steel plate friction material, and at the end, what actually looks like another steel disc, it's not, it's actually what they call the end plate, you can tell it's the end plate because it's actually much thicker than the others, uh, as you can see from there. Some of the clutches, uh, the end plate is marginally thicker than the rest of the steel discs, but in this one, as you can see, it's much thicker. Uh, also, you can see here, there's only uh, two friction uh, pieces, and some of the clutches are up to six, it just depends on the on the clutch that you're talking about, but the general assembly is identical. The clutch itself, what we've got is the piston at the back here. You've got what they call a cut spring, which is held in place by two stop rings. Now these stop rings um, now are actually sort of jammed in there and they're holding this spring plate under a, a lot of, uh, under a lot of pressure. The way the clutch actually works is that you can see at the back here, there's a hole, uh, there are actually two of them on this particular clutch that applies oil pressure to the underside of the piston. When that happens, the piston is forced upwards, it compresses the clutch pack and obviously uh, makes that clutch activate. When the oil pressure is released, this the big cup spring here actually pushes the piston back into place, allowing the, the clutch pack to be released. What we need to do is compress this cup spring so these can actually be released, these stop springs. What I've come up with is a tool to be able to do that. It's just a piece of 12mm thread bar uh, mounted to a, a board. And this pole here is about 30 centimetres long. For this clutch we don't need it to be that long, but for other clutches you will need it to be uh, at least that long. What is mounted on the top that to actually do the compression is this modified hose clamp. You may or may not be able to see, but there are a number of holes drilled in here so I can use this on different clutches. Uh, this size of cup spring is slightly different throughout the transmission, so you will need to adjust it depending on the one that you're actually going to compress. In addition to that, I've got this piece, really solid piece of tin, but a number of holes drilled in it for different widths of this. So I can actually move these to the different holes so I can press this nicely down on it when I'm compressing the clutch spring or the cup spring place. On this side of it, you can see that I have there's four bolts, they're eight millimeter, a bit over hundred mil long. I've cut grooves in each of them, so it actually grips nicely the, the ring that I'm going to compress. I've cut the insides off just so I have a little bit more room to move to remove the, the stop rings as you'll see later on. There's, it's a little bit tight. Bolts on either side and what I'll do is I'll put this on when it's actually inside the tool uh, and compress this down. Now before you do that you just want to adjust these bolts so this sits nice and snugly on each of these all the way around. You don't want this rocking about the place otherwise it won't compress the, the cup spring angle. Fairly easy to adjust all of those. Now with the, the ring size, what's important is that we actually have this big enough 
so that I can actually move these stop rings out once I actually compress the spring. But also what I don't want it just to be too big because it's not actually going to compress the cup spring. From what I've seen with this, certainly this transmission, the ideal size is generally about the saw out where these cutouts are. So if you actually have it out about there, the only one that's not like that is the, the D slash G clutch. I'll have a look at that later on. But uh, also the C clutch, which is the first one that you come to when you come into the transmission, has actually got quite large cutouts. You don't need to have it all the way to the, uh, the edge of that. But for this one here, which is pretty normal, uh, being the B clutch, uh, being around the edge of those cutouts is kind of ideal. So let's have a look at how we actually take it off. I always have the hose on when I take this on and off. The inside surfaces here are really finely machined for for oil flow, some of the the clutches actually are much much narrower the hole, so you really will need to use this the whole time. You don't want to damage those surfaces. We'll put our our ring down, and we're just going to pull this off. I'm going to place this on, and just align those grooves that I put in those bolts, so they all sit nicely. And now we'll compress it down. Now you may think this thread bar is excessively long, it certainly is for this clutch, but for the C clutch, which is the first one again that you come to in the transmission, you've got the oil pump assembly uh, on top of this as well, so it's actually quite a large bit that comes up to about here, so you need all of this. It's about a foot long, so you'll uh, make sure you have all of that if you're going to be doing this. So center everything up nicely, and then we're going to start compressing everything. Down. down so see that cup spring start to compress and bend downwards. And now what we can do is simply get a little pick tool in here and pick these out. And out they come. Now, if I close this, now everything comes back. It. Now what we have is that cup spring, as you can see it bends upwards, which is what gives it that compression. Once that's removed, you now seen here, a bit difficult to actually see the components, but this is actually the piston, this big thing. Uh, to remove that, because there are two holes on the insides here that send oil to the underside of the clutch, you can just cover one of those, send compressed air to the other and it'll just pop it straight off. Or, like me, if you don't have a compressor handy at the moment, then you can just turn the thing over, and give it a good thump on something hard that's not going to damage it. Good couple of thumps, and it'll just pop straight out. So, to put it all back together again,
and the recipe for they get compressed down and I'm just going to do in. Prior to releasing the pressure, obviously you're going to put those in the right position. So they're not going to get jammed and then release the spring pressure. Step is of course to put the clutch assembly or the clutch back in. First thing it's always going to be the undulated spring steel disc, friction plate, steel disc, friction plate, and then the thick one, the end plate on the end, and then very simply. Feed in the snap ring, and there you go. Back to where we started before.